Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Beaver and today, as you can see, I'm not in my normal studio. Now a couple of changes happened since I've been on the YouTubes in the last couple of months. So one of the big changes is I took a new position in a different town from my hometown. So it has caused me to move away from home. And uh, yeah, I'm renting a small little flat here up until my family can join me here in Alice Russ. But I wanted to continue on making YouTube videos. So yeah, we'll be recording from this spot here for the foreseeable future. Like I said, up until the family can join me on this side and we can actually set up a new studio and so on. So yeah. From this side here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to keep it as simple as possible when it comes to the home distillation. I'll be using a couple of smaller stills, mainly that small still that I showed you guys a while ago, and try and keep the distillation side of things as simple as possible. So more on the home distillation rather than the big... Uh, still and all that other fun stuff doing massive recipes so yeah we're going to keep it simple we're going to focus on making stuff that you can do in a very limited space with limited equipment and yeah hopefully that will be fun for the foreseeable future so if you guys will find that interesting please remember to hit that subscribe button downstairs hit that like button and yeah let's get into it Now for the video today, I want to talk about two different types of controllers. So you've all seen me use my standard PID controller. Now this is a controller that controls the energy going into our, my still. Uh, so the still I've got at home has a three kilowatt element on the inside. And this controls the energy going into the still in a funny sort of way now we'll be looking at the PID and we'll also be looking at an SCR controller so I'm busy wiring up my new control board for my still um, I had it 3d printed I will upload the model to Thingiverse and put a link down in the description box if you want to print this it does take a PID a SCR on the back it has place for two switch over switches as well as a light and then this big gaping hole here will be for our fan so we're going to be fitting a fan right in there that will be circulating the air and all of that comes into this lovely little box air vents at the top and little screw holes to actually attach it and two inlet ports for your cables so yeah it also has a nice little space for your um, what's this again called for your solid state relay um, for your SSR so yeah as well as the heat sink that I use so it's been printed so everything fits in nicely nice and snug together the fan at the back here will allow air to pass through the heat sink and over all the other components because the air vents will be on top so we'll be sucking cold air in and blowing the cold air through the top or maybe even sucking the cold air from the top and blowing it out the bottom so we'll see how we wire it up so yeah while i'm wiring up let's quickly talk about the different type of controllers so like i said first up we have a pid controller so it's pid proportional interval and derivative all that means it uses a formula or a algorithm to maintain a specific set point. So in this instance, this is used to control temperature. Now I, I saw a lot of guys on the previous video commenting that PID should be nowhere near distillation. I beg to differ. PIDs are used in commercial stills all the time. They use different types of algorithms and they use it to run column stills to maintain to maintain temperatures at specific set points within the columns um, as well as in your fractional stills where 
they need to control the specific energy going in and the cooling temperatures going down into the reflux uh, side of things. So from that point of view, PIDs are used all over distillation. Now, I do understand the caveat when people say PIDs shouldn't be used in distillation or at least in the home distillation world. And as far as I can understand, it comes from the fact that we do not really distill to a specific temperature. Now, I know a lot of forums and a lot of discussions and especially new people coming into the hobby tend to want to know what temperature should I distill at? Because all stills have a little temperature gauge at the top of it or in the bottom of the boiler and people then assume that, yeah, you need to be able to track your temperatures. Yes, you need to be able to tra track your temperatures, but not for the reason why I use my PID. Now, the reason why I use the PID is it maintains the energy going in and I don't have to manually set it. So I do not set a temperature at, let's say, 76 degrees and then expect my still to remove all the alcohol from the wash and then only bump it up to a higher temperature once I want to run into tails or anything like that. No, I use that temperature setting while I gauge my takeoff speed. So depending on the wash, because every wash has a different temperature that it distills at, if you want more information about that kind of stuff, we'll do a video coming up soon where we will be talking about the temperatures and how I set my PID to look at when I need to up my temperature or decrease my temperature. But like I said, I use the PID purely to check the takeoff speed. So if I wanna maintain a specific takeoff speed, I might set or I may set my PID at 83C and that will give me enough vapor speed going up my column and through my reflux condenser and down my line arm to give me the takeoff speed and the ABV that I want. So I do not use it to set it at a specific point and then expect the PID to keep the wash at a specific temperature. I do not track the temperature of the wash. The PID sensor actually sits right at the top of, at the point of no return within the still so it only measures the temperature of the vapor it does not measure the temperature in the boiler so with that being said what happens is this will pick up the temperature and it will relay it down to the pid to increase or decrease the amount of energy needed to put into the still now once again if i take this and i set it let's say at 83 degrees and i get my takeoff speed that i want about two, three hours into distillation, I will see my takeoff speed starting to dip, but my temperature is set at 83, and the PID is doing a good job to maintain that temperature. Now, what that tells me is that the alcohol in the boiler is getting less and less and less because my vapor speed is no longer there to actually bypass all the components and then get down to my line arm. So the temperature just hovers at that point where my sensor or my temperature probe sits and falls back down the column. So what I need to do is increase the temperature so my vapor speed increases and then I know I'm getting close to my transition from either heads to hearts or hearts to tails. So yeah, I use that PID to actually test that temperatures going out and I use that temperature to gauge my takeoff speed. And the PID does a good job at maintaining the takeoff speed. So it does not just focus on keeping the temperature. If you're gonna use a PID, and I agree with everybody that says that, if you're gonna use a PID and think that it's a set and forget and just plug it in and let it ride, and if you put it at 76C, what will happen is all the alcohol will evaporate off. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. I did do a video about vapor liquid equilibrium where we take a look at the difference between liquid and vapor temperatures and at what point a liquid turns into a vapor and at what uh, point does that vapor turn back into a liquid. So it's very interesting. I'll suggest you check it out and that will 
give you a lot more context around how the PID can actually help you in distillation. Now on to the next one. Now this is a SCR. So at the back you can see the control board of the SCR. So all the SCR is, it is a resistor based system where it takes the energy going into um, or the, the electricity or the power going into the unit and it runs it through components that decreases the energy going out and you can control it via a knob you can go from depending on what kind of pot or a what kind of uh, system it has on the inside when they talk about a pot it's a potentiometer on the inside yeah depending on what kind of potentiometer you have on the inside there and how fine you can adjust it you can go all the way from zero to a hundred or in increments of 10 degrees or whatever depending on how uh, not degrees uh, energy units depending on how sensitive the uh, potentiometer is and yeah it just takes the energy coming in normally if you look at the back on the board you'll see the no uh, neutrals are bridged out but the live actually runs through the components it runs it through a series of components increasing or decreasing the amount of energy going through the whole system via the knob now with that you can then adjust how much energy you want to have go into your pot i have found from experience by using uh, plenty of scrs what happens is that during the first period of the run you might put 80 percent of the energy into your still and if you don't keep a close eye on your still and you don't spend the time doing your testing what will happen is that 80 percent energy will lead to you having boil overs or lead to you taking the product off too fast and then you con constantly changing the the energy going in up and down to try and maintain your um, takeoff speed where the pid does a great job at that because we set it at a specific temperature and we get that takeoff speed we want and once again i'll clarify not the temperatures that will separate alcohol from water or air from acetaldehydes coming off or um, your acetones or whatever it's purely a gauge on the takeoff speed now with your scr your takeoff speeds you're going to have to learn your still so you're going to have to learn that at 80 percent power or 80 percent energy going into the still you're going to get this kind of takeoff speed at 100 percent you're going to get this at 50 percent you're going to get this and you're going to have to play around with it as your um, system runs with a pid the moment you set it at 83 degrees you're going to get 283 and the still will automatically start decreasing the energy where with your scr if you put that energy on 100 percent you miss maybe turning on your condenser or um, you step away for five minutes from your still which you should never do but at that point the still reaches temperature it's going to start producing and you might just end up losing some good product by the time you get back to your still now as always don't walk away from your still if you're going to have to do go do something turn off the still and start over don't walk away from it but yeah PID works great don't use it for temperature control use it for speed control and then your SCR works fantastic if you want something simple you just twist the knob and it increases the energy or you turn it the other way and it decreases the amount of energy and then you can fine tune it within that ratio that you want and remember always choose an SCR larger than your element that you're going to be using so this is a four kilowatt um, SCR and I've got a three kilowatt element in my still so 1000 watts to spare that will allow me to actually play with this because SCRs don't really like to be turned up and down up and down the whole time they tend to want to spend a fair bit of time on one setting before you change it with your um, PID it runs through this a solid state relay this is purely just to switch on and off the the element now with the PID it does it so fast 
that it actually cycles between that so if you measure it with a voltmeter or with an amp meter you'll actually see that the amps decrease in the cable it's um, like taking a hose pipe and putting your finger over it and spraying a little bit of water and then stopping it but not stopping it all the way and yeah just doing that and get that flow happening so this is what this does it switches on and off by using dc voltage on this side that the pid puts out and if you want a video on how to wire this whole box up remember to put it down in the comment section and i'll explain all the wiring as well as the setup of the pid so yeah that is my 10 cents worth on pids and scrs and why i use both i use a scr as well as a pid um there is situations like the previous one where the pid messed around but unfortunately my scr was blown so i couldn't switch over to the scr control and i had to stick with the pid so there are situations where the scr will suit a or will work better than your standard pid controller so yeah there are instances where one is better than the other but in general both of these will get the job done it's only in very nuanced situations that you're going to need either or so yeah as always thank you very much for watching and have a lack of day